Good afternoon. My name is Reina. I am a missionary and I live in the Long Beach community. I hope you are enjoying this retreat as much as I am. Enjoying the inner silence, listening to the daily face sharing of each missionary. In spite of the circumstances, we experience the goodness of God that manifests God's self through his creation and through many acts of love that we experience day by day. This morning in the meditation, we were invited to look through the window to perceive God's beauty through nature. Here in Long Beach this morning was raining. So I literally just looked through the window. What a gift to have this opportunity to, for retreat to live this holy week from the inside, from the authenticity of the heart that seeks God, that seeks spirits, healing, mercy, and salvation. Yesterday, we were contemplating Jesus, Jesus' intimate relationship with the Father, who was the fountain of his life, his strength and unconditional love. Jesus experienced himself loved by God, sustained, chosen, and sent. But above all, Jesus experienced himself as the beloved Son of God. As it says in Isaiah 42, 1 to 7, the first of the servant songs of Isaiah. He is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nation, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. In this passage, we perceive God's tender love that sustained his beloved son. I am sure Jesus had this experience every day of his life, being chosen and being sent as the beloved of God. To show God's tenderness and compassion to this world. When Janet mentioned this morning the little hummingbirds that have been born in our courtyard, they have honestly filled us with such a joy and tenderness to notice how life goes on as nature unfolds. A few days after they were born, the mother taught them to fly, but one of them was a little lazier than the other, or perhaps a little scared to fly. I stay there watching, wishing to witness his first flight, but he did not dare to fly. The mother came, fit him in the beak, then he tried to flap his wings, but he did not dare to fly. Three times the mother did the same. And the fourth time, the mother tried to push him, to encourage him to fly. I could not believe that the mother was doing that. It was a lesson for me to realize that some of us don't like to be pushed to grow. We like to take our time while others see the potential and the freedom found in it. True love is like that. It does not leave us in the nest. We are nurtured. Love strengthens us and gives us the wisdom. But there comes a moment in which God knows we will not grow unless we leave the security and the safety of the nest. God knows that there is a greater realization in growing, in being mature, in going the extra mile, in loving when it hurts. For Jesus, it was the time to give glory to the Father. He who lived his whole life knowing he was sent and chosen to complete the works of his Father. Yesterday, we were meditating on Jesus' entry to Jerusalem. While many were applauding him, others were turning their backs on him. But he is not moved by the approval or disapproval of others. He is moved by love, by the desire of salvation, by the desire of liberation and the healing of many. In an interview 
with Pope Francis last month. Someone asked him what he had prayed for in these days when the pandemic hit Italy. He responded, I asked the Lord to stop the epidemic. Lord, stop it with your hands. And I was very touched by those words because I could tell the same thing to God. God, stop it with your hands. We hear Jesus also crying out sometimes at the end of his life. He reflected, Pope Francis reflected also that we can find small gestures that express closeness towards the people we care about. Our days and our lives won't be wasted when we show some love. And Jesus lived his life in this honesty of knowing his own vulnerability as human. In the passage of Luke 22, 31 to 34, we can see the honesty with which Jesus confronted Peter. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to shift all of you like the wind, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you turn back, you must strengthen your brothers. How many times has this passage helped us or helped me to recognize that without God, I can't do nothing? But the certainty is that when my faith fails, Jesus is praying for this consecration for giving us a strong faith and hope. The relationship of Jesus with the Father, his trust. He is not afraid to feel vulnerable and pray for strength. On the other hand, Simon Peter has not touched the reality of his vulnerability. He still believes he can do everything. He believes that Jesus chose him because he is a strong or because he has the capacity for leadership. Perhaps he does not feel loved. He wants to win everything, to be strong, the one who does not fail, the one who does not betray. And Jesus confronts him with the reality of his life, that life is vulnerable. Something we all share in common, and this pandemic reminds us of it. How many moments in these days we have felt that we, have, that we are broken. And sometimes we cry. We hope that the news will give us positive messages, good news. And the image that accompanied me in these days is that of Noah's Ark. Every day when I wake up, I imagine sending a pigeon to see if the pandemic has passed and if we can get off the boat. We don't like the uncertainty of not knowing, of waiting. However, God is present in these moments of uncertainty. He knows our sorrow and he fills us every day with incredible experiences of his love a love that manifests itself today in the details of every day. The definition of praise means to celebrate, to glorify, to sing. But we don't experience it echoing in the experiences of our life every day. And one psalm that helped me a lot also these days is the Psalm 137. When the Hebrews during the Babylonian exile, um, they were asking them, and it say, the psalm says, by the rivers of Babylon, there, there we sat weeping when we remember Zion. On the poplar in its midst, we hang up our hearts, for there our captors ask us for the words of a song our tormentors for joy. Sing us for a son of Zion. Sing for a son of Zion. But how can we sing a son of the Lord in a foreign land? These words of the psalm 
137 resonates with me frequently during this days. How can we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? We experience ourselves outside of our land, outside of our daily routine. We would like to run and celebrate birthdays, go out for a run, visiting the beach, celebrating weddings or baptisms, or simply share a bread with a friend, family, with someone. And the reality is that we find ourselves in a foreign soil, unknown. We have never lived this historical moment. We never want it. We never thought we would have it. It feels like as, as if our lives have been interrupted. But how good it is to experience like Jesus, God's encouragement to us. Courage, you are my servant. I support you. I chose you. You are essential. I chose you to encourage the tired, the downcast. I will not let you fall. The Lord says, and the prophet Isaiah reminds us that God holds the earth firm. God who says, I spread out the earth with its crops, who gives the, grip, the bread to its people. Creation continues to do its work. The cycle of life in the fields has not stopped, not even that of the seasons. This day, someone wrote in an email, thank goodness spring isn't canceled. And I deeply appreciate it too. It is true that we cannot leave the house nor visiting our families and our friends, but the rest of creation is in a constant state of giving glory to God. St. Francis of Assisi said, praise be the Lord for our sister, Mother Earth, which sustains and governs us and produces various fruits with colorful flowers and grass. Praise be to you, my Lord, for those who forgive for your love and endure sickness in tribulations. Praise be the Lord. This afternoon, we invite you to enter with Jesus into the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Or we could be the home that hosts Jesus, what a privilege to have Jesus come into our house. John 12, 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of these, those reclining at the table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfume oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. On this evening, I would like to invite you to contemplate Jesus with Martha, Lazarus, and Mary. Use your imagination. Imagine that Jesus is in your house, that your house is the place he has chosen. What are you going to prepare for him? Is Jesus welcome to your house as he is to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? He is not on lockdown. He comes to visit us, to stay with us. Martha is serving. This action reminds me of all those who are still serving, the doctors, the nurses, the trash collectors, and so many others that cannot stay at home or to work from home like I do. And we pray for God's care and strength for each one of them. Lazarus is reclining at the table with Jesus. He could have helped a little more, but for now, he is the host. When someone comes to visit, they are not left alone. They need to feel welcome, and certainly Lazarus made sure it happens. 
But where is Mary? Mary is preparing the final and highest act of praise and devotion to God. The experience of friendship, faith, and extravagant affection for his friend or her friend. Mary took a liter of costly perfume oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and drank them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Mary's gesture of anointing the feet of Jesus with precious ointment and wiping them with her hair is a gesture of friendship, love, and faith. Mary's anointing of Jesus fills the house with the fragrance of the perfume. Can you imagine Jesus feeling love? Not just by the Father, but by his friends. Someone recognizes who he is. He is the Son of God, and he is not alone. And he needed this affirmation also from his friends. On the other hand, Jesus is carried, is carried one of his disciples say, why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and give it to the poor? But Jesus said, he said this not because he cares about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money back and used to steal the contribution. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Mary did not care about the cost. It was an act of praise, an act of gratitude to God. And Jesus also needed this affirmation, an anticipation of what was going to happen to him. And I would like to ask you today, this afternoon, what is that expensive perfume that we have that we don't want to give to Jesus in these days? Perhaps it's the control, the demand of work from home, the recognition that we don't know how to be at home for 24 hours a day or living together, or sharing with others, or being with the children. What do we need to give to Jesus today? How do we offer our lives? Because what we are holding back might be the very thing others are waiting for us to do. What is the most expensive thing for you to offer to Jesus today? Every life is a gift. So let us ask God to teach us to be a community, a family, capable of recognizing in the others what they need in this time. Small acts of love. This morning, I was very touched by the song, The Cry of the Deer. Christ with me, Christ before me in the streets. Christ behind me, Christ in me. Christ on my right and on my left. Christ when I lie, I, I lie down or when I sit. Christ in the eyes that sees me. Christ in the ears that hear me. And I added, Christ in our home, in those who surround us. Christ in those we pray for and with. 